In this webcast, we're going to put together everything that we've learned previously to show the reaction coordinate diagram for the proton transfer step that we've been discussing. Like many proton transfer steps, this particular step is under equilibrium conditions. We can go forward and backward. In this particular case, the products are favored over the reactants. And the reason for that, I'll leave up to you to decide and figure out for yourself. We plot this on a reaction coordinate diagram here on the bottom. We plot our reactants first on the progress of reaction. And next to it, we draw the structures of our reactants. We have our phenol and our hydroxide. Through the course of this reaction, we have to put in our delta G double dagger for this forward reaction. We have to climb from that minimum to the maximum, to that barrier height, to our transition state. And we put our transition state structure that we drew previously right there. Now once we go over that maximum, we go downhill and reach our products at the bottom and we now have our fully broken uh, phenol OH bond and our fully formed hydroxide OH bond in our products. Note that we can also go backwards for this particular reaction as well. We could start here at our products, put in our energy, put in enough energy to equal our delta G double dagger for our backward reaction, this B, go backwards, back up this hill, and end at our reactants. However, there's more energy that's required to go from our products to our reactants. This delta G double dagger B is much larger than our delta G double dagger F. This backwards reaction takes more energy to occur, so therefore it will occur much more slowly and also much less frequently. So these are the things to keep in mind when drawing your reaction coordinate diagrams, your transition states, and your reactions.